Nikita Bachchan and you are watching Metalogic PMS YouTube channel. The cruelty of global pandemic seems limitless. I hope you are keeping well by staying indoors and go out only when it is necessary. Today I bring you the CEO of JSW Steel Coated Products Limited, Mr. Sharad Mahendra. JSW is India's largest coated and value-added steel producer. Mr. Sharad in his previous assignment was working as director and COO and was on the board of JSW Energy Limited. Sharadji, this is such a pleasure. We have you on our show. I've met you almost 10 years ago during one of the conferences organized by us. I would like to welcome you wholeheartedly. And thank you for accepting thank our you. invitation. Thank you, Monica. I remember that conference in Gurgaon where we met for the first time. <laughs> right, sir. So now to begin with, uh, you know, I like to ask you one question, uh, which is uh, JSW is planning or setting up uh, the state of art color coated steel making facility in Jammu and Kashmir to support local demand. How much demand do you see coming from these states in the near future? See, Monica, yes, uh, basically we see the hilly terrains, uh, uh, not only Jammu and Kashmir, but other hilly terrains also. Uh, where especially Jammu and Kashmir uh, we have identified in the first phase is because of the climate conditions and whether it is a, a pakka house what we call with the slabs in urban markets best of the houses or in the rural area the steel roof is a must in that climate when the severe snowfall happens the inclined roof is a must which a cement slab cannot if the snow gets accumulated so that is a must requirement which earlier used to be uh, covered by different other materials also uh, slowly we started seeing in last maybe 10 15 years that the, these materials were started getting replaced by steel with the form of galvanized steel and then uh, the color coated which has a better life better aesthetics and so we are seeing a huge demand potential and the demand is growing much much uh, more than what the normal demand uh, growth is there in case of color coated across the country with that reason and also the uh, understanding the need and the dependency when our studies uh, uh, showed in that market that availability also is a key concern so that is the reason that uh, uh, we have decided with the government of india coming out with uh, uh, investor friendly policies in terms of the industries to invest in the state of jammu and kashmir uh, we decided to go for with a dual objective one to contribute from jsw side into uh, into the development of the state by way of providing state of art material also to ensure local employment and uh, we are in the process of finalizing government is working on that in terms of the land allotment and other things in the industrial area which we are hopeful that it will be finalized very very soon it is something has already got finalized few things are pending but will happen and we from our side have already started the employment from the engineering colleges uh, in uh, Srinagar and kashmir area and those uh, uh, boys are already boys and girls are coming for training in our existing plants in the state of Maharashtra and other locations which will happen in few uh, months they will be trained and then they will be stationed back in our Kashmir plant uh, with the uh, objective of local employment in addition to that the indirect employment we see a huge potential apart from uh, going into the interiors and identifying youths from the, those areas at the village level as the retailers and as uh, to ensure our network is there we will be going for that mod sales model and then the transportation and other vendors and other suppliers so we will maximize the local participation uh, in the state of uh, jnk uh, to contribute to the state econ economy also this is really wonderful because uh, this is where uh, you know usually the local community complains that the investors come they invest but they never give us employment so through your uh, you know upcoming projects how much employment generation uh, uh, jsw quoted uh, uh, will be generating see uh, monica because this is just a color coating line with some finishing facilities on which we are working whether to make uh, along with the profiling 
of the sheets to cater to the uh, direct re end cons consumer requirement and also the manufacturing of uh, uh, optimum low cost steel doors and sandwich panels keeping in mind the weather condition all put together we expect uh, direct and, uh, and indirect employment put together anything between 250 to 300 people will be benefited from this project and sir, uh, talking about uh, your project expansions and upcoming facilities, what is the current uh, production capacity you have and how much is expected in the near future? See, current capacity, uh, keeping in mind our four coated manufacturing plants in the state of Maharashtra and uh, two small plants in the state of Punjab, one in the state of Haryana and another plant where we are doing the conversion and all, all put together right now we are current year we will be closing uh, with a total capacity of by because capacity is getting commissioned uh, during the year some of it has got commissioned some in the process of commissioning we will be ending the year of only jsw steel coated with a capacity of almost 5 million tons coated capacity which is in addition to what the coated capacity we have uh, in jsw steel and also the our jasugura plant in uh, uh, under bhushan power and uh, the calcutta plant of coated that is additional so put together it is 5 million tons which is the capacity that's wonderful and talking about the demand uh, for coated products uh, in the domestic market uh, how much demand do you see in domestic and also i like to know uh, you know uh, export demand uh, for coated products how do you see that See, Monica, the domestic demand is in the range of 9 million tons of coated products and which is growing and expected to grow, continue to grow at a higher rate of around 10% to 12% growth. Year on year, we see that is the way because uh, the per capita steel consumption for coated is extremely low, what it should be in a country like India. But the rapid pace of urbanization which is happening and uh, uh, the steel replacing the uh, uh, other products also and availability and uh, repenetration by the steel companies in general uh, is helping in uh, making these available coated steel available so all this put together we expect a significantly faster growth rate of coated steel uh, and and we see that from in the current year expected consumption of almost 9 million ton this to continue to grow by maybe uh, at least about maybe even if on a conservative side eight to ten percent so in uh, maybe five years time we expect the consumption to be in the range of 14 million to 15 million tons so this is the domestic in, uh, consumption you're domestic consumption i'm talking export is a very very big market it's a market uh, which is huge but we have to understand that entire capacity planning which we are doing is only on the basis of domestic what is the potential which is there because their uh, export of course we are the largest exporter of coated products uh, to various parts of the world and supplying more to more than 60 countries uh, but yes we have to understand that always there are challenges in terms of the various trade barriers whether tariff or non-tariff barriers non-tariff we are not concerned because we are able to meet but tariff barriers which are there which makes economically a challenge so Europe also, if we see that uh, largest market for coated from this part of the world is the European market, but they have also come out with quotas which are there. So uh, we are not, uh, we don't know tomorrow if there will be any kind of duties which will come. So one is that we, ha we have diversified ourselves, uh, our international business into uh, newer geographies. So to de-risk our business by reducing the high dependence on Europe. So we see that export will continue to play a role, important role in our business because capacity comes in a, on a particular day, the 100% capacity is there. Demand growth in the domestic market is gradual. So there is something that the demand gradually is increasing in domestic till that time export is taking care because our first preference is to contribute to the country's demand which is very very That's important wonderful. and so talking is, about the yeah talking about the duties uh, you know anti-dumping duty on imports of color coated or pre-painted steel imposed by dgtr in 2017 will expire in january 2022 uh, do yeah. you see government intervention to extend the anti-dumping duty and what are the key reasons you think the duty should be extended 
definitely we expect and government should see one we have to understand that what is the country demand what capacity if you see countries color coded if i take an example today the country demand this year is expected to be around 3 million in color coded in domestic market the demand existing demand is in the range of four and a half million plus minus few uh, thousands here or there with this kind of capacity available and domestic demand at three million there is no reason that government and capability wise the kind of technology which we have at least i know about jsw we have brought in best of the products uh, we are in a position to make uh, we are uh, also created facility and further creating to reduce the import dependency on the very very high demanding high value added segment like appliance and others so all those things put together one there is no reason that a duty should not because this is an inferior product uh, manipulating the bis norms which have been set the product are coming we have made already a representation to the government of india second is that if we see recall monica very very recently government of india has come with a very very good initiative of pli scheme on investment one side government is saying please invest this is what we are giving and other side making it difficult to sell what on which i invest these are two contradictory things so there is no reason that uh, government should not in case there is a shortage of material not uh, domestic demand is not being catered upon uh, then there are reasons to at least discuss so there is no reason and logic it is a contradictory step of the uh, one that time encouraging investment and leading to employment for P under pli scheme and other side making it difficult to sell who will invest i totally get it in fact my next question was on uh, pli only uh, since the pli scheme okay. is in place and uh, uh, we know that the quoted products are included in pli scheme what i want to know from you is what challenges do you face under the scheme as in we all understand there are plenty of opportunities but of course the scheme has a timeline and uh, it need investments to come in so i want to know what is your view uh, what challenges do you see see uh, keeping in mind the constraints which the world is facing today uh, monica in terms of uh, new investments and getting the uh, plant and machinery and commissioning in a timeline is a challenge today today uh, if anyone has to travel is not traveling internationally anyone come on to come from europe or korea or anywhere we are not getting people to come so business international business of these plant and machineries is has become very very difficult to uh, install and commission also so there is a long lead time so keeping in mind the window which has been given only as the constraint i see that in planning investing commissioning and taking the benefits that timeline only is the constraint which is there uh, and especially under the global constraints because of this pandemic which is there so that is the only challenge i see otherwise the scheme is good uh, there is no reason to uh, for a scheme not to be successful barring this uh, timelines so as per you what should be the timeline as in what is your suggestion see, i if i have to only uh, plan a color coding line uh, maybe uh, if i today conceive uh, a structure line coming from outside if i have to put a quality machine everything maybe uh, about 2 years time is what i see that plant will take to commission at least but there are high, long lead items also if for special steels or anything else a steel plant is to be put which has a longer lead time so maybe i feel that uh, timelines again will depend to comment exactly on a timeline will not be right it depends at what stage what if i am trying that i will invest very small amount bring a inferior quality machine uh, either locally or from uh, china i can do that project in one year one and a half year also but then if it is a real quality sustainable business model it needs a higher lead time this timeline is very very tight is what i would like to say i think that can be extended maybe government once they see you know the success rate of pli scheme they may consider to extend i also feel that government will be should be flexible once we invest once we show that the work is in progress really the things are happening on ground i definitely feel that the government official they will be definitely flexible to this is what my expectation is
So Sharad ji, I, uh, you know, I want to know, there had been a lot of talks about uh, recycling of uh, uh, quoted products uh, is very environmentally, you know, uh, degradable. So is there any technology uh, which is, you know, less impacting or uh, environment friendly uh, when we talk about recycling of quoted products? See, uh, Monica, we have to see two things. One, recycling the entire cycle. Give the coated product for melting. It is possible. But what will happen? One is when a zinc coated material or a LU zinc coated material, the kind of fumes which are generated and uh, the environment hazard is so high that it may not be right with the present set of technologies which is there to uh, straight away melt we tried that then we had to really when we saw the impact on the environment because we can do the melting in a steel plant as a scrap we can melt up to a limit only because the zinc adds to impurity uh, in the steel making the composition metallurgy which is required a certain small percentage can be done but then we found that the it is uh, rather than giving any value uh, the harm is more to the environment and we at our uh, this thing under the sustainability that uh, environment uh, uh, is extremely important and the sustainability for us and we have a very very special focus and various initiatives we have taken so this is not the best way but now what to do so what we have we do we have already uh, been uh, implemented uh, uh, a process wherein the generation of coated steel is scrap. Generally, coated steel scrap generation is in the form of slits, side slits, or in the form of trimming, which is a process requirement. So, what we do when we generate the trimmings, maybe I can do by generating only 2 mm or 3 mm, uh, 4 mm uh, uh, per side the trimming of galvanized material and my process. But then whether this 2 mm or 3 mm can be used, then various end uses we identify. So then we where if somewhere we found that the uh, trim this trimming should be at least 7 millimeter or 10 millimeter. So we deliberately make a higher width, generate more scrap, which is actually I will come to that. It is not a scrap. Similarly, we generate slits. Then what size of slit we should generate? Slit can be uh, 50 mm also slit can be 25 millimeter also slit can be 100 150 millimeter also so we generate only those slits which are prime product for our industry though as a category it is sold as a scrap but this is sold as a prime material there are pre-galvanized tubes which are made so we produce those slits in a size where maybe a daily inch tube can be made or two inch so tube instead of uh, going for a remelting phase uh, what you are doing is you are scrapping and converting it into a product similarly trimming trimming when it goes there are lot many items which are made it are gift items also or any other item so interest so i don't get much price because that is a very low price segment but that is not the my prime product that is a part of my process cost so we I totally get it but i uh, but i think you are being conscious about you know end of uh, uh, end end life cycle the part where we have to be cautious is the bis norms yes yes so bis norms say this much of me if you are selling a galvanized product this is the coating so we follow that also it is not that coating we don't make a low coating material non bis material is strictly no no in jsw so when we sell also as a product, the customer knows this is a 120 GSM or this is a AZ150 or AZ70 as per the approved coating. That also customer knows. So we are selling majority of our material is being sold in that process, in this process. In fact, in today's meeting only I told to my team that don't categorize it as a scrap. This is not a scrap. Which industry is buying? I know the customers, what they are doing. So this is a category which may not be giving me the price of a prime product, but this is a prime product for that industry. That is how it is to be seen. But melting is not the best option today with the technology available, uh, Monica. It is extremely hazardous to environment. Yeah, we have been constantly working on this aspect 
we also made attempts to remove the zinc coating in a process so that at least steel can be used for melting but then re even removing the zinc also the kind of temperature which is required and the kind of fume generation which is happened then collating that zinc is extremely hazardous too so we have not been able to but we are exploring the global environment to have the best of the options uh, to how to take care of this but environment is the top priority basically. but that is so satisfying that uh, jsw is being so conscious and uh, you are seeking uh, support from uh, technology providers in terms of you know scrapping or remelting it and of course you're converting it into an actual product you know end of life so it has been taken care uh, for the other industry so this is also a fabulous thing because this is always a area of concern whenever we talk about color coated steel of course it has a lot of value to it but then uh, this is the part you know which always causes a concern monica with because this, this is hard to cater to the government of india's uh, focus also wherein we have a dedicated team catering this is majorly catering to the msme requirement a part a significant part of the msme also is getting by getting this affordable priced product which is a prime product for their industry to get so that under that focus also we are working so with this i would like to thank you uh, sharad sir for taking out time for us and uh, thank you for being here thank and, you uh, monica was... always, always pleasure meeting you and uh, i think uh, metallurgic is doing extremely well by creating the awareness among all the members and uh, really uh, anxiously daily wait for the uh update summarized update which takes care of my day thank you very much thank you so much sharad sir and viewers do not miss to subscribe to metallurgic pms youtube channel sure sure sure, sure.